Good day! Welcome to Percussion Multitasking Part 3. We're going to be talking about bass drum and crash cymbals at the same time. Maybe we'll add in a little suspended cymbal for fun as well. Um, and uh, what we're going to do for this is we're going to talk about various different ways that we can actually accomplish playing both of those instruments at once. So, first of all, I need to set up a bass drum. So what I'm going to do, obviously there are many different bass drum stands in existence in our whole wide world. So this one, um, most scissor stands are like this where you have a, there's a wider leg of the stand and there's a narrower leg of the stand. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that the narrower leg is closer to me. And I'll show you why in just a second. And I'm going to put my bass drum on the stand. Now, typically when you play orchestral bass drum, it's nice to be able to have a variety of different dampening solutions. So one solution is that you would put, um, you would use your knee on the stand. Another solution is that you would use your hand to dampen it, or that you would put your hand on the other side. And what you'll notice, based on what I just did, is the fact that dampening it on the playing side cuts off more than dampening it on the non-playing side. So we're actually going to be, um, because we're only going to have one hand available for this job, plus one knee, as it turns out, we're going to be dampening it on the playing side. So it's not the end of the world that you don't have another appendage free to reach over to the other side. Uh, that's totally fine. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting my leg here on the stand, and this is one option. We're going to talk about another option as well, but um, this is the reason why I've set it up with the narrow leg towards me, so that I can actually put my foot closer to the drum and therefore have my knee closer to the drum in order to be able to play. And now I can use my mallet and I can strike right in the center or I can strike closer to the edge to get a softer contact sound. And that's all fine and well. Another option is that you can use a chair instead, just a standard rehearsal chair with no arms. Let's get this a little bit out of the way. The nice thing about a chair is regardless of um, how tall you are, how short you are, what your bodily dimensions are like, you can put the chair wherever you want and then you can put your foot wherever you want on the chair in order to dampen. And then also if you're worried about how stable your scissor stand is, you don't have to worry about the fact that you're burdening it with the weight of the drum as well as the weight of your leg if you're concerned that it's really old and brittle and it's going to collapse or something like that. Because now your foot is on the chair instead. And I've got my knee against the drum and I'm still able to get pretty much the same dampening solution. As you can see, this technique is a little bit awkward, so um, I have a video up on traditional technique as well from a little while ago. If you want to check out that video, then you can learn traditional technique, and traditional technique is a way less awkward play, uh, awkward way to play the instrument um, than to play with match grip. If you play with match grip, you need to angle up like this in order to make sure that you're not going to be hitting the rim of the drum with the mallet shaft. So. That's the way you have to do it if you're not going to play with traditional technique. Do not play with backwards technique. It's not going to... It's just it's the opposite motion of what you're always doing for everything else. So it's not going to help you get a good result and a reliable and accurate result. So always play forwards, but we're going to use traditional technique for now. So that's that. Next part is adding in the cymbals. So I'm going to, once again, just like I did in multitasking part two, I'm going to spread the legs of the cymbal stand wider than usual. And then I'm actually going to feed this one down here through the chair so that I've got my other one right here. I also want to have this cymbal angled towards me a little bit, or personally I do in, in any case, I want to have it angled towards me a little bit. And you can see that just like in multitasking part two, I have actually installed an extra felt so I do have one felt below the cymbal, and I have two felts above the cymbal, so that I can really jam the nut down and force the cymbal to stay um, at a consistent angle, which is going to make my job a lot easier with respect to getting a good sound out of playing the crash cymbals. So effectively what I'm doing, just like I said in the previous video, um, obviously if you're multitasking like this, circumstances are far less than ideal. So um, to introduce another less than ideal variable into the equation, this is an old 18 inch symbol. This is a fairly new 20 inch symbol. We're going to find a way to work with that. And uh, so what I'm actually going to do, if you want to stand more centrally and just kind of bear down, you can see I'm actually going to step on the stand leg of the suspended symbol stand with my right foot 
and then I'm going to put my left foot up on the chair and get my knee ready to dampen the bass drum and then I'm going to grab my mallet and get ready to play the bass drum and then I'm going to line this cymbal up so that I can actually get ready to play and then If I do need to actually choke the cymbals, just like in the previous video, because I'm standing on a leg of the stand, I'm going to be able to jam my abdomen into the cymbal that's on the stand and pull the other one into my upper abdomen or into my chest so that I can get a, a short note like that. And you can see if you just move over here slightly, that additionally to that, what I'm going to do is after I play the bass drum, I'm going to apply my entire forearm surface area to the bass drum. Um, so that I'm dampening the bass drum afterwards as well and getting as short a note as possible. Incidentally, there is a very fancy mechanism that some orchestras own and it's called a pump mechanism where you can actually mount a cymbal upside down on a bass drum and then play crash cymbals with the left hand and play bass drum with the right hand and you'd still be able to use your right knee to dampen in a conventional way but most um, educational music programs do not own such a device so this is a solution for how to do that in less than ideal circumstances. Just like any circumstance in which you would have to multitask, it's obviously less than ideal, but we come up with a solution anyway. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.